everyone, welcome back to episode 11 of One More Thing. My name is Cody, I'm the host of One More Thing, and I'm joined again this week with Pastor Chris. Uh, we had been in this series called A Generous Life, uh, where we set a few weeks um, aside uh, this month to talk about uh, money from a personal and from a church-wide perspective. Uh, we've looked at some biblical understanding of generosity, and we looked at the importance of having a plan for our generosity. Um, but this past week, um, Pastor Chris, uh, you felt like God um, was wanting you to share something different, mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. And we had um, a standalone message uh, this past weekend. You mentioned to us uh, that you've kind of just been in a season of discouragement, and honestly, uh, I have too. <laughs> um, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, here at our church and around the world have been feeling that um, on some sort of level as well. Um, our passage this week came from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 16 through 18, and I'm going to read those for you uh, today. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, how at the core of these verses, um, the meaning is that no matter what's happening on the outside, uh, I mean, literally, Paul's talking about the body, mm -hmm. right? What's happening on the outside, uh, we are being renewed on the inside uh, day by day, and that God is still working on the inside, and that if we are to endure, and how I view it, um, is almost a sense of fighting back, uh, not giving into discouragement, uh, we need to fix our eyes on things that are eternal. Uh, and you gave us, um, at the end of the message, these those three things um, that we need to fix our eyes on, and that was we need to fix our eyes on God, first and foremost, uh, the people that we serve, and what God is doing in our life. Um, I appreciate this message um, just because of how real it was. I think um, our church family appreciates how vulnerable and open and honest you can be. Uh, I heard a lot of good things this past weekend online. And for me personally, um, when discouragement tries to creep into my life, I need to be reminded uh, to fix my eyes on the things that are unseen and not lose hope. Um, so I really appreciate this message. So if you haven't watched it, go watch that right now. It's really great. Um, and we'll jump into just any extra thoughts that you might want to share today. Sure, first. sure. I appreciate that. Uh, clearly, we've been living through some difficult uh, times for the last couple of years. And as I mentioned in the message at the beginning, you know, I, I, I understood that. I felt like I had a good understanding of that for 2020, but at the same time, uh, I was hopeful uh, that when 2021 rolled around, that things were going to kind of change and we're going to make some progress forward. But, you know, that just hadn't really been my experience. And so, you know, I could really relate to what Paul was talking about when he was talking about the very real prospect of losing heart, which to me is just a good uh, definition for discouragement. I, I really do believe, as you said, a lot of people are feeling the same way. In fact, when I was... Uh, uh, putting the message together, one of the things that I read was uh, called a Healthways Wellbeing Index that was put out by the Gallup organization that does a lot of uh, the polls that we come across. And uh, I wrote down in my uh, a note here just that one of the things that they said in the introduction to the index is that Americans are smiling less and worrying more than they were a year ago. Hmm. Uh, and that makes sense. But what was probably surprising about it or, and would be surprising to most people is when they listed the different reasons why that's probably true, they said at the top of the list was uncertainty. Hmm. And the, the, uh, the health index was all about the difficulty that uncertainty brings into our lives. Um, you know, an uncertain future leaves us stuck in an unhappy present with nothing to do but wait. Hmm. And the longer we wait, because we're all just, you know, fallible human people, um, the more our mind goes in different directions and the more we think uh, and focus our thoughts on the wrong kinds of things. Hmm. And 
And that's when discouragement kind of creeps in. And so really, I think uncertainty is one of the, the biggest factors to the discouragement that people will sometimes feel. There was a, even an interesting uh, uh, part of the, the index that talked about a Dutch survey where they gathered up, I don't know how many people, but enough people to put them in two groups. And honestly, I don't know why you would ever volunteer for a survey like this, but they told all the people that they were they they hooked them up to some uh, electrical stimulus. And they said you're all going to get you're all going to experience twenty shocks. Okay, oh, my God. and uh, and uh, they told Group One you're going to experience twenty significant shocks. Hmm. They told Group Two you're going to experience seventeen light shocks and three significant shocks. And then they uh, kind of studied the response. And at the end, the response told them that the, the group two that was only going to receive three significant shocks and 17 light ones, uh, they had much, rapper, much, much more rapid heartbeat. They were sweating I profusely. Bet. I bet. Uh, even though they were going to get the lesser end of mm -hmm. uh, the shock, they had a much more difficult uh, response to what was about to happen. Again, I, I think maybe they were paying money. <laughs> you know, somebody Hopefully was, it paid well. Somebody was desperate to make a little bit extra money because I wouldn't have signed up for a, a survey like that. But, but that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds us of this truth that uncertainty can cause us to feel discouraged. It can cause us to lose heart. That really speaks to, or really should speak to us as Christians when it comes to matters of faith, because as long as we live in this world, we're always going to face a certain amount of uncertainty because nobody knows what the moral holds. But by faith, we know who holds tomorrow. Hmm. And we just need to be reminded, as I tried to do in the message, that the way to overcome discouragement, the way to not lose heart, is to keep your focus always on our eternal God. Mm -hmm. And I I, uh, I just wrote down some Bible verses here that really stood out to me related to that and, and the taping of this one more thing. Um, Psalm 46, one says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I like the emphasis on ever present because we can be uncertain about a lot of things, but we can't be uncertain about God because he's always with us. And he's always there to give us help. Psalm 121 verses 7 and 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. Mm -hmm. And again, just reminds us in a day of uncertainty that we can be certain about the presence of God and the protection of God and, and that he's got his eye on us. And then I wrote down Isaiah 41 and verse 10, uh, where the prophet writes and says, So do not fear, he's quoting God here, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And there are just so many more verses like that that just remind us of the certainty of God's presence in our life. And so when we're talking about you know, fixing our eyes not on what is seen because that's temporary, but what on but on what is unseen because that's eternal. And I said the first thing was God, which sounds like the ultimate Sunday school answer. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is that's always going to be the first answer, especially when we're struggling and uh, we're feeling discouraged and we feel like we're losing heart because uh, the from cover to cover, literally from Genesis to Revelation, the scriptures give us the promise that our eternal God is always with us. He's always aware of what's going on. And we can be uncertain about the future, but he is never uncertain. And that's what we need to trust in. And that's just that's just the one more thing I think I would emphasize that's good. in follow-up to the weekend. That's good, that's really good. I appreciate that. Um, we are finishing our uh, A Generous Life series this weekend. So join us for that, because then next month, it's Christmas time, so I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So hope to see you this weekend. See you.